There are fewer than 30 men in the world qualified to drive Formula One. A mere half dozen, perhaps, to win. At this moment, I'm inclined to think you are not one of them. Hello, this is Desiree for F1Weekly.com. I'm your in-depth correspondent. Let's go. We're the Steve. Welcome to F1Weekly.com. My name is Clark Rogers. I'm the host of the program. I'll be joined by Nasser Hamid, my co-host. This is podcast number 796, July 15th, 2019. Nasser. Thank you, sir. Wins ahoy for LCH. He is doing the safety dance while Seth is singing our favorite song, I'm Sorry, So Sorry. And Rich Energy is pretty poor in controlling Rogue Element. Back to you, Chief. Thank you. On today's program, Hamilton has an imaginary rival to keep him motivated. Leclerc says, I don't think so, Mr. Max. And Bourdais and Takuma Sato duke it out. We're dogs, but they keep their helmets on. And let me remind you that we need your contributions to keep this program on the air. Just click on the Support F1 Weekly tab on the front page. You know you want to. Anyone donating more than a million dollars will receive an F1 Weekly coffee cup and sticker. There you have it. Nass, welcome to the studio. How are you? I am doing very good, sir, as you can imagine. And what a British Grand Prix we had. Her Majesty must be jolly delighted. For me, Clark, the race was an MLK moment. I have seen the future, and so have millions of others. And the future of Formula One Grand Prix motor racing is Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen. But wait, there's more! Silverstone staying on the calendar? Who could ask for anything more? And I have an idea, and this is going to get you going. How about a knighthood for LCH? for scoring 80 Grand Prix wins. I think Sir Lewis Hamilton will sound very good in press conferences. What say you? I say Stinko. Once again, it was a hollow win. I felt sorry for Botas. And, of course, the excitement of the British Grand Prix wasn't Lewis Hamilton continuing to win, 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 you know, his, his buddy said it, we'll get sick of winning. We'll win so much. But the fun and excitement was in the middle of the field with, with the little people, including Leclerc, Max, Ricciardo, Norris. I'm telling you. And, and Grosjean and Magnussen, who keeps us laughing every day. So indeed... What a shallow and boring race for Lewis Hamilton, especially since the team went out of their way. I mean, the safety car came up. They had to do it because they really know that Bottas is number two and he has really no business leading the race. <laughs> Man! But truly, the, the stars of the, the British Grand Prix were certainly Leclerc and Max Verstappen, as you call it. The future de Formule 1. Well, I have to say, and I totally agree with you, that Formula 1 has been on some serious five-energy pill for the past two Grand Prix, and we peeps are loving it. And yes, the real action, the real drama, real excitement was behind the Silver Arrows, and it was very, very exciting. And uh, it was just, um, it's amazing, you know, how wins are falling in Lewis Hamilton's lap. Like he needs another win. We had the problem in uh, Canada where there was a big brouhaha. And uh, now we have this. I mean, how uh, fortunate he is, or lucky as you call him. But this is uh, very impressive. And let me tell you, man, 80 Grand Prix wins, 11 to go. Uh, this, this is looking very, very good for Lewis Hamilton. And it was good to see him um, enjoy the race win, you know, doing crowd surfing and whatever he was doing and running around. But it was very good. 
and uh, I really, really enjoyed it. Let me tell you what a Sunday I had. Our friend Mr. Inam Ahmed is racing in Japanese Formula 3, and they have two races per weekend, sometimes three. So his race was coming at 3 a.m., my time, Florida time. So I got up at 3 in the morning to watch this race live, which was fantastic in the rain. And then I watched the, I think it was the um, tape raced on the Formula 1 website on F1 TV, as they call it. So I watched the GP2 sprint race. Then I watched the F3 race. And then came the big kahuna. So this Sunday was mighty, mighty exciting for me. You feel the same way, senor? Yes. I mean, I'm excited, sort of. But I can't wait for the future. I just hope I'm here to enjoy the future. Yeah, the stuff we have seen, you know, from Jackie Stewart and Ronnie Peterson to... Lauda and Ayrton Senna, Prost, Michael Schumacher, LCH, Alonso. You remember him, right, Fernando Alonso? No, never heard of the guy. Yes, he he was the world champion a couple of times. He got lucky too in a mile seven car. Just joking. And then we have uh, Max Verstappen. So we're in, in amazing times, you know. So I'm very very happy how what we have seen in our lifetime. So before we got into nitty gritty of the motor race. Shall we talk a little bit about Collie? Why not? I mean, hey, at least Fernando had a challenge. Yes, he had a very formidable challenge. Cannot deny that. Anything uh, stands out in Collie for you apart from Grosjean cr- crossing in the pit lane? Hilarious, hilarious, hilarious. I'm just surprised that, well, what can you do? I mean, Grosjean should be fired any day now. What's up with this guy? You know, he's either crashing or just constantly complaining. I don't know. Maybe he needs to go to IndyCar and duke it out. Yeah, I I think his time at Haas is up. That's what I think. I may be wrong. But going back to Colley, interesting to note, strong in preseason testing and frequently strong in uh, free practice. But when it comes to delivering in Colley and in races, looks like the Ferrari challenge is a fake challenge. After the usual once-a-season hiccup in Austria, it was business as usual at Silverstone. Very impressive to see the wingman clip his teammate for pole position in very tight fight for the pole, ending in favor of Botas by point zero zero six. That that was a fantastic duel between the two. Charles Leclerc was third on the grid, which was expected, but only point oh seven nine behind. His illustrious four-time world champion Sebastian Vettel was sixth in Cali, not only behind his teammate but also behind two Honda-powered Red Bull cars of Max Verstappen and Pierre Gasly. The GP2 engine has sure come a long way. And I just wonder, Mr. Rogers, who's screaming? Tokyo or Oviedo? IBM presents. You make the call, Mr. Rogers. Bravo. Now, both Mercedes cars qualified on medium tires, while both Ferraris qualified on soft tires. I was very surprised, no split strategy between the teams. And your favorite home team, Renault, made it to Q3, both cars, which is good for the sport and, of course, for the host. Danny Rick was 7th and Nico Hulkenberg 10th. Two rookies made it to Q3 and things are looking very rosy for both of them. In the long haul, Lando Norris was ninth in his McLaren and Alexander Elbon 10th for Toro Rosso. Anything uh, you want to add on the Collie situation, sir? I mean, I was happy for Botas. I mean, obviously, you know, and Silverstone is a great track. I love watching the race there. I mean, the quality is fun to watch. Uh, the crowd is fantastic. I think they had over 350,000 people all in all. So, I, I you know, it's, it's great to see... Uh, the British Grand Prix at Silverstone. Yeah, the race day crowd was like 141,000. And you know this guy, he's a senior person now with uh, Marcin Budkowski, something like that. I was watching the team principal press conference and they asked him, all of them, about the um, Silverstone uh, British Grand Prix. And like anybody else, you know, he said uh, uh, the passion of the fans here is amazing. And also, he noted what anybody would notice if you go to Silverstone. And I remember talking to Lee Diffie, the commentator who was with NBC Sports, 
and he even made a comment that when you're talking to a British Formula One fan, you better know what you're talking about because they are on top of things. So I'm very happy the race is going to be there for another five years. And you know, there is, I don't know which corner it is, but when the cars are coming and they make a right turn and the speed and the quickness that they make that turn is very, very impressive. Do you remember when Montoya won the British Grand Prix in a McLaren some years ago? Of course. They, this uh, corner I'm talking about, the camera was much lower than what it was this time around. And man, it was so awesome to see these cars come full blast and boom, in a New York second, make a right turn. Very, very impressive. So, shall we go to the race now? Confirmed. Well, I have to borrow a phrase from you. This was what I call ration. Did you enjoy this race as much as the Austrian Grand Prix Senior? Better. Really? That's good. And I mean, I was very impressed by the performance of Valtteri Bottas and all the mayhem that was uh, going behind him. Uh, and Lewis, uh, beating LCH to pole was an amazing achievement. And then leading the race after retaking the lead from Lewis was very, very impressive. Lewis kept him in DRS range most of the time and had Botas beaten LCH to victory, it would have been an incredible performance. But, you know, I had a feeling that this is Lewis's hometown, and he's no slouch, obviously, even if he's not on pole. But I had a very strong feeling, whether it was undercut or overcut, that he will find a way to pass uh, Botas to take the win. I did not take into account safety car coming in, which really, uh, you know, screwed up the race for uh, Botas, which allowed LCH to pit under caution, and then his amazing talent deprived Botas of his third win of the season. And I have to say, Lewis doing the fastest lap on the final lap, uh, very impressive. On hard tires, very impressive. Your thoughts, senor? Mm, mm, I'm not, I wasn't so impressed. I mean, come on. But hey, I know you love him. And who did you love before? I can't remember. Well, you know, you said he has an imaginary, um, and I read about that, uh, competitor. Why don't you just think of Lewis as Fernando Alonso? And then what do you think about the race and the season? I would still be critical. This is not exciting. Uh, I find it hard to believe. <laughs> Trust me. I am very machismo and sensitive to how one wins. We don't have Imola, and we don't have uh, Hockenheim. So... But that's okay. I'm happy. I'm peppy. I mean, Leclerc and Max will, will give us something to, to scream about. That's very true. To borrow a phrase from the host of longest-running F1 podcast, Lewis is lucky. Lucky dog he may be, but his bark is worse than his bite. Listen to the numbers. 80 Grand Prix wins, which is 11 short of Michael Schumacher, and we still have 11 races to go this year. And the rules will be pretty, rules and cars will be pretty much the same next year. So I think the I think the scenery at the front of the grid will be the same. Also, your essay is well on his way to wrap a new world record by the time Glenn Campbell gets to Phoenix and the Grand Prix Circus gets to Parabolica next season. And I just have a feeling if the way things are going, that Lewis might have 91 or more wins by the time we get to the. Italian Grand Prix next year, and all of this success will make Botas linemen for the county. Victory at Silverstone has made Lewis the most successful driver to win his home Grand Prix. Your hero, Le Professor, had five wins in his home Grand Prix, and so did Jim Clark. Lewis said his win had the same emotion, win this year had the same emotions for him as his first British Grand Prix win in 2008 where he beat another teammate who was also from Finlandia, Heki Kovalainen. So we have Lewis first, another Mercedes 1-2 with Botas, and then we have Charles Leclerc in third place. Your thoughts on the performance of Mr. Charles Leclerc? Fantastic. Leclerc finally said, Mr. Max, not this time. And he did a fan. It was just great, great to watch. That was fantastic. Yeah, that was really the race of in the race. And Leclerc, like you said, he learned his lesson well in Austria and put in a great drive on Sunday, calling it the most fun he has had in his young Formula 1 career so far. 
I did not follow his karting career much, but I did meet him and also Max when they came to the Scusa Championship Finals some years ago. I think it was 2014. And apparently both of them have a history of doing a lot of battles, uh, you know, feisty battles in their karting days, uh, just like the... Pierre Gasly and uh, Esteban Ocon. So it will be interesting to see how this uh, rivalry develops. But I have a feeling that uh, Max has his match in uh, Charles Leclerc. What do you think? Well, I think I think the entire Formula One world is now looking at these. I think Leclerc certainly does fit the bill at Ferrari, as Vettel is now obviously on the decline. So Max is in a team where they still need to build a little bit. But he is definitely number one. Gasly has proved that. So I think as Leclerc will slowly become number one, Max is number one. I think in a couple of years, depending on how screwed up Formula One gets, we may have a great battle or we'll just keep saying, hi, LCH, hi, LCH, hi, LCH. Yeah, I think that will be the story next year at least. And, you know, Charles Leclerc's, um, this battle, epic battle with Max will be long remembered. And it definitely served notice to Max. There will be no Austria 2.0. So future is very bright uh, for this driver from Monte Carlo. So we really, really look forward to a lot of action between these two um, youths. Now we come to Pierre Gasly, the man who was fourth. I think this is his best finish since Bahrain last year. Remember how happy he was when he was fourth with Toro Rosso last year? See, si, bravo. Yeah, he has been under the gun since becoming Max's teammate. No surprise there. At the stone, he put in a rock and roll performance. His red, I'll tell you this. Do you remember when Sato passed, um, in his, uh, what was it, uh, the other Honda car? Scuderia Aguri, Super Aguri? When he passed Alonso in a McLaren in Montreal. You remember that moment? No, nope, I don't recall. Oh yes, just like the 2007 season. Excuse me. But, uh, Gasly's Red Bull Honda passing Sebastian's Ferrari made quite a statement, I have to say. A few more performances like this should keep him as teammate to Max in 2020. And talking of Max, this kid is a bulldog with the speed of a greyhound. Leave the driving and the push and shove to him. Seb did to him what Danny Rick did to Max in Baku last year. With all the harem scarum that was going on behind the silver arrows, it was only a matter before somebody did somebody some harm, body slamming, as they call it in New York and New Jersey. New York, New Jersey, same thing. But, you know, I was surprised that we did not have more, you know, fender bender and body slamming because there was so much um, intense competition in the drivers behind Lewis and Botas. Happy with the performance of Young, the replacement for Nando, Carlito, Carlos Sainz Jr.? I think so. I mean, the, the the car is getting better, and Lando Norris is impressive. There's no doubt. Yeah, Carlos Sainz Jr. McLaren is coming back, race by race. In, impressive performances by both Carlito and his rookie team, teammate Lando Norris. You know, we've been singing his praises since 2015 when he raced in what is now called Formula Four UK. Sainz Jr. and you know, both of these drivers has been they have been signed on for next season. And Zach Brown said they did not want to go through the silly season and rumors and constant explanation of their drivers. So it's good to see Carlos Sainz Jr. and Lando Norris signed for McLaren uh, next season. Carlito has the speed and maturity, and I see speed and feistiness in his teammate Lando Norris. I, I think Lando Norris is going to be a big star, especially if they can give him a competitive car. You know, he's also managed by Z Zach Brown, by the way. Oh, nice. Yeah. So Daniel Ricciardo, both Renaults in the points. Aussie mate was 7th and his German teammate Hulkenberg was 10th. Nico's contract is up at Renault this year and a lot of rumors where he will be next season. His name has been linked even with Formula E and going to Red Bull, which I don't think is going to happen. I think he should stay where he is. Full-blown factory effort may come strong one fine day and I'm sure there is some good catering at the Renault uh, paddock in the hospitality area. Do you think Nico Hulkenberg should move away from Renault? No, I think I, Ricciardo and Hulkenberg is a good strong package. As long as Renault keeps making steps forward, just hang in there, buddy. You know, I see that Daniel Ricciardo, he's not blowing away Nico Hulkenberg, uh, just like Max was not blowing away Daniel Ricciardo, but 
uh, Daniel is doing to Hulkenberg, slowly choking him like Max did to him at Red Bull, but um, which proves to me that what I always thought that Nico Hulkenberg is a very good driver, and we have to keep in mind Danny Rick is the guy who went 3-0 and against Sebastian Vettel in his own team back when they were teammates at Red Bull. So that's a very impress- impressive performance by both Daniel Ricciardo and Nico Hulkenberg. Uh, do you think we'll see a podium for Renault this year? No. I think we will. I, I think it might be a lucky podium, maybe rain hit thing. Uh, but I, I have hope. Just as I was hoping that Re- Honda will get a win, which thanks to Max, they forced their way in. But I, I have a feeling that uh, Ricciardo or Hulkenberg might get one this season. But time will tell. Now we come to the old man of the sea and the season. Kimi Raikkonen was eighth while his teammate got stuck in kitty litter. Kimi is quite the racing driver even at the tail end of his F1 career. Makes very few mistakes, not involved in any dramas on the track. Remember how he used to be involved in silly things um, in days gone by, especially in his McLaren days? But now that he's married and has a couple of kids, you don't see, at least you don't hear about him doing silly stuff on his off time. That's very true. No more gorilla suits, no more vodka, no more naked chicks. And that uh, rubber dolphin that he was found lying in Bermuda, whatever it was. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Now, he makes very few mistakes on the track, not involved in any issues, no politics. But I think it will be, for me, the, it will be the Kimi of McLaren days that I will remember. And just watch the opening laps of the 2005 San Marino and Spanish Grand Prix, and you will know what I mean. This guy was lightning quick. And I must mention, he came into Formula 1 doing less races than Max Verstappen did. So, kudos to him. Final point was picked up by Daniel Kvyat. He was 10th, making three Honda powered cars in the points. Chop Chop on Gasly would put Kvyat back at Red Bull, but looks like both may stay where they are for next season. Do you see any uh, chance of a Kvyat going back to Red Bull next season? No. Yeah, I also don't see. But I'm also pretty impressed by Alexander Albon. What do you think? Very impressive. Yeah, this kid has, you know, he, he, he was part of Red Bull also and he was, you know, discarded when brought back. So he's doing a very good job and I'm happy for him. Now, you know, it's amazing. The Haas drivers, Kevin Magnussen and uh, Romain Grosjean, uh, causing damage to each other and dropping out in the opening laps of the race. They are like um, Esteban Ocon and Sergio Perez a few years ago. Remember when they will find each other? Oh, yes. Is there any cure for these two guys? Yeah, you're fired. One of them or both of them? You know, I like Magnum, uh, Magnuson. He should stay. Grosjean has got to go. Okay, just a quick look at the championship points, sir. Your favorite driver, Lewis Hamilton, 223 points. Botas is second on 184. Max is third on 136. His teammate is sixth with 55 points. Fourth and fifth are Ferrari drivers. Seb on 123 and Leclerc 120. At Sauber, Kimi Ra- uh, Sauber Alfa Romeo, I should say. Kimi is eighth with 25 points, while Antonio Giovinazzi is 18th with one point ahead of pointless Williams drivers. Now, let me get your opinion on Seb. Once again, a mistake. I don't know if it was a boneheaded mistake, but he did apologize to Max Verstappen. But, you know, with all these mistakes he has made in the last few years, starting with the Shamazel in uh, Singapore some years ago, what's going on here in your esteemed opinion? I think it's the decline of uh, what used to be a young whippersnapper at 21 who won his first Grand Prix in 2008 in a car that had no business winning. And now what we have is an older man with children, a wife, just like Kimi Raikkonen. Yeah, he is. I was thinking about his situation and I was thinking, you know, it's like the siege of Leningrad, uh, no way out. He is going through what I call the siege of Sebgrad. He is under pressure from his teammate, under pressure from his competitors at Mercedes. I mean, there are reports that apparently he hangs out still a lot at the Red Bull camp for food and chatting with uh, Christian Horner and Dr. Marco. But there are rumors that he might go back there. If he cannot handle um, Charles Leclerc, he's not going to rattle the cage of Max Verstappen. And I, I don't think he's going to go back there. There's no way he's going back. Nobody goes home. You cannot go home again, Nasser. We know that song. Yes, I want to go back, but can't go back. Who was it, Eddie Money? See, 
but he has made a lot of money so he is not going to be missing out on anything but i i think that um, i don't think he's going to win another championship now because even if next year ferrari comes on strong charles leclerc will have one year experience in ferrari and i think people already know that he is their future so pretty sad ending for uh, seb kind of like another World, double world champion who left his team and thought he could make things happen without the knowledge of his manager. Who would that be, Mr. Rogers? I have no idea, Nasser. I really don't understand some of these questions. <laughs> yes. They all have the same answer. Anyway, okay, real drama. And this is a very, very bizarre. Over the British Grand Prix weekend was provided by a tweet from Rich Energy, the amazing Red Bull competitor that has manufactured 90 million cans, but according to their own statement in court, have not filled all of them. And part of, I'm sure you read this, right? What they put out? No. Okay. This was the t- tweet they put out. Uh, at Rich, en- Rich Energy, I'm just reading what the message is. Rich Energy terminated our contract with Haas F1 team for poor performance. We aim to beat Red Bull Racing and being behind Williams Racing in Austria is unacceptable. So that was the tweet. Initially, this was reported to be a tweet by a rogue employee who then turned out to be the flamboyant CEO of the company himself, Mr. ZZ Top, or maybe they call it ZZ Top in England, also known as uh, William Story. Apparently, there is some problem between him and the other shareholders, and there are all sorts of information coming out that they're trying to, you know, move the guy who did this. Apparently, their Twitter account is under the control of William Story. So I'm not 100% sure if he did the tweet himself or asked somebody to do it. And obviously, you know, uh, Haas and Gunther Steiner, they are not uh, uh, pretty uh, thrilled with it. But uh, let, let's see what what happens, you know. And then uh, the British Grand Prix was the 1007th race, and Red Bull were displaying two of James Bond classic Aston Martin license plates on their car this weekend, uh, which was very, very impressive and very creative, I have to say. Now, sir, some word on the Austin Grand Prix. Uh, according to media reports, the live telecast of the Formula One Austin Grand Prix on ESPN2 earned the largest U.S. television viewership for this event since it returned to the F1 schedule in 1997. With an average of 640,000 viewers, the audience was up 48% over ESPN2's telecast last year. So that is very, very impressive and good news. And I just hope that, you know, we have, obviously every race is not going to be like um, the Austin Grand Prix and the uh, British Grand Prix, but I hope we have a few more of these things so people, there's a lot of buzz about Formula One, and then Lewis can bring in more people from Hollywood, and that will make it even more. uh, I'm surprised you haven't made any comment about that. No, it's because I'm tired, Nasser. Okay. Okay, hopefully some something good will happen and Lewis will not win a race. Now, who would you like to see win a race this year? Seriously. Nico Hulkenberg. I would like to see Charles Leclerc get a win. And I want to see uh, Max get a few more. That will be very exciting. Obviously, nobody's going to challenge Lewis at this stage. But I think if, uh, if, Ma- if Max can take the championship fight to Botas, man, that will say a lot about him. The championship fight to Botas? I mean, I'm sorry, fight for the second in the championship. Oh, but number two is a bad, bad thing. But that will be something to get there in a Red Bull Honda. GP2 engine. Yes, sir. GP2 engine. I wonder, somebody has to ask. Uh, I don't think he's bitter about it. I mean, they did spend three years with them. And, uh, but, oh, you know, talking of Alonso, there was a news item from, uh, talking of Alonso, there was a news item uh, from, uh, 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 Dr. Helmut Marko, and uh, he said in an interview with the magazine or a website that he was uh, Red Bull has been approached by what he called uh, Alonso's entourage that they would like to replace Gasly with him. But he said there are two words in the way: one is impossible, the other is Honda. So I have a feeling that this guy may never drive another Honda-powered machine. So. So if he wants to go to uh, MotoGP, he won't be teammate to uh, Mark Marquez, which is pretty sad. It's, it's going to be okay, Nas. You sure? I'm positive. 
Okay. Shall we take a break now for a water break and then do the MM? Absolutely. So we'll be back after these brief messages. Hi, I'm Carlos Sainz, and you are listening F1 Weekly. Welcome back to F1Weekly.com. Clark Rogers here, your host. And now, as we spin the globe and go around the world with Motorsports Mondial, with the king, the Swami himself, Nasser Hamid. Thank you, sir, and we'll stay at Silverstone for some more action. Support series, Formula 2. Historic day for Chinese motorsports as Guan Yu Zhu took pole position for Saturday's feature race. Italian Luca Giotto was the winner. Canadian Nicholas Latifi was second, with pole sitter Zhu third. Mick Schumacher was 11. Giuliano Alessi was seriously lacking any motivation and was a lap down in 17. Sunday's sprint race was won by Anglo-Korean driver Jack Aitken. Nick DeFree still leads the championship. Then we had Formula 3, which was previously known as Hape Race or GP3. Yuri Vips from Estonia won the first race on Saturday from pole position, and this kid is now in the Red Bull program. Italian Leonardo Pulcini won the second race on Sunday. And sir, you know, I mentioned a few races ago at the... Some of the F1 races also has the uh, Porsche Cup Series, uh, Super Cup Series, Porsche Super Cup. I normally don't watch that, but, you know, I get excited about any racing activity or series when there are some talented drivers. So there are a couple of young kids in this series. One is uh, from your country, Francia, Julien and Lauer, who is very good. And the other is a Turkish kid. His last name is Guyan. Or first name is, it's a little difficult for me, but we'll call him Guyan. Uh, he won the race, uh, Porsche Super Cup race from pole position. Very impressive. I think he's like 21 years old. And, uh, so I'm keeping, I'm watching these, uh, this series now because of these two kids. And there's this German guy who used to race in, uh, GP2, Michael Amber Mueller. He's, he's, he's like the, Rubinio of Super Cup. So that's pretty interesting series and I'm going to keep an eye on this. Now some very exciting news, sir. Our friend, F1 Weekly friend, Mr. Inam Ahmed, you know, a couple of years ago, he won the British F3 in a very dominating fashion. And uh, Peter Brazier and myself, we hung out with him and his papito quite a bit on race weekends when we go to these races. Uh, so he's racing in Japanese Formula 3 and this past weekend he got his first win. So, which was very impressive. He was on slicks and it was wet weather condition. And he, on, in that situation, he set the fastest lap. And then he was second in Sunday's race. So, he's, he's doing good. I'm happy for him. And uh, we will uh, keep an eye on him as the thing progress. Now, I have not had a chance to watch the IndyCar race. Um, but I saw and read about what happened uh, between Sato Saint and your Monsieur Bordet. Uh, Simon Pagano won the race. Can you fill us in as to what happened there, please? Well, you know, Sato San pulled a Schumacher running after David Coulthard in 1998 at Spa. Sato San really got pissed and started running after Bourdais. Of course, these guys always keep their helmets on, but there was some pushing and shoving. Then the knuckles got up, and it was down goes Frazier. Down goes who? Frazier. Oh, okay. And who was the Frazier? Both of them. They got broken up, but they did hit each other's helmets a couple of times. It was exciting. Very good. And that's what IndyCar, ne- uh, IndyCar needs. We we all need that. I want that in every Grand Prix. Oh, we don't want that at Grand Prix. Did you watch the IndyCar race by any chance? No, I could not. I had a uh, medical appointment. And you are planning to go to the IndyCar finale at Laguna Seca, right? Of course. Okay, and that should be fun. I used to go there when they used to race there, and uh, it's a fantastic part of the country and a very good track, too. Grazie. It's, uh, you know, if they extend the track double the size, and uh, obviously it's not lush green, but if they make it lush green there uh, with fake grass and fake trees, then that place will look like spa. A lot of fake grass, huh? Yes, sir. Now we come to famous last words. <laughs> now, this was obviously said before the British Grand Prix, but this is Dr. Marco on Gasly saying that he has is now using the setup of Verstappen, Max Verstappen, and has also changed uh, his uh, style of driving. But this is what he said about Gasly. He should think more about his driving than telling Adrian Newey how to build a car. End of quote. Dr. Marco is something, man, I'll tell you that. 
machismo. Yes, sir. Any final parting shot, sir? Well, everybody loves uh, Scott Speed and Vitantonio Liuzzi. Oh, yeah. They were also a victim of love at... Uh, you know, let me tell you about Vitantonio Liuzzi. Do you remember Red Bull was and still is famous? And there are two sides to every story. Uh, for letting drivers do what they want to do. You know, they don't tell them. You know, Red Bull drivers have never been PC-oriented like drivers at most other teams. I was uh, I was reading an interview of uh, Antonio Liuzzi on one of the websites a few months ago. Man, he, he was very, very pissed off at Red Bull. He said they encouraged him to continue with his lifestyle and the way he was. Remember him and uh, Scott Speed, how they would talk? And he said they encouraged him and then later use that same lifestyle as against him, that you are not serious and you're not doing this, you're not taking care of this. But that's his side of the story. And he was one of the stewards at Silverstone. Did you notice that? Yeah, I I, I did see that. I was laughing a lot. I thought Vettel would get a couple of penalties. Yeah, that's the way it goes, man. Well, Mr. Rogers, I've been thinking about something lately. Anything I should know? I think you should know. I'm thinking. I'm thinking of uh, skipping on Tejas and saving my pesos and pesetas, pesetas and shekels and baths and Turkish liras and go to the season finale in Abu Dhabi. And here is the reason. It's the final race. A lot of, lot of Grand Prix personalities will be there. So, and if I go there, I have a friend who lives in Dubai which is about an hour and a half drive. Um, I don't know if you've seen the hotel prices. Oh, by the way, the cheapest grandstand ticket for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix is like over $500. So I'm thinking if I go and hang out at my friend's place, which I did in 2010 anyway, I can be there for several days and just bag a lot of, lot of interviews. What say you? I think that's a good idea. I mean, we already know who's going to win. So why not Abu Dhabi? It's very similar to Texas. Yes, it is. That's for sure. They drink a lot of beer and they eat a lot of beef. Yes, and they are very religious like uh, Lewis Hamilton portrayed last year so eloquently. The Jesus. Yes. You know, instead of cowboys, they have camel boys there. But, you know, I blend in with anybody as long as they speak English and understand motor racing bravo so that's that's the game plan man and uh, i even let my boss know that hey that's what i'm thinking and she goes you know she's also planning to go there uh, like uh, in january so let's see what happens I'm, I'm very excited by the way that track you know the track is a typical tilke drome but the facility which is on a mad man-made island mr rogers you have to see this facility to believe it. Uh, just incredible. And it's very hot. It is hot. That's for sure. That's why I'm not going, Ness. Yes. So as Will Buxton would say on Paddock Talk, that's your lot for today. Keep up the good work, Ness. I want to thank everybody who listens. Good night. Hey, bef- bef- not so fast. I have to ask you your favorite question. Who's going to win the German Grand Prix? Who else? I, I think Max Verstappen. No. Charles Leclerc? No. Nope. Tell me. Lewis Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton is going to win the rest of the Grand Prix forever. Yeah, it's amazing, you know, how the competition has caught up, almost caught up to them, and sometimes they even beat them in the race and in the qualifying. Mercedes just keep on winning. Yeah, and unlike our president, they don't get tired of winning. And um, the Lewis has now won seven of the ten races. That's uh, absolutely amazing for him, obviously. Well, not not only is it amazing. But he, the, it's the amount of ease that he gets the wins. I mean, it's not like he's fighting for tooth, you know, tooth and nail out there, you know. I mean, it's just like, here you go, Lewis. Oh, here you go. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. I mean, I've never seen anything like this. Well, you know, part of the reason is he does not have Max Verstappen as his teammate or Fernando Alonso as his teammate. That's what really makes the big difference. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you cannot have, I mean, to have a package and no teammate. I mean, I don't even think he has any stress in his life. I mean, it's probably yoga in the morning, a little tea and some biscuits in the afternoon. And then he goes, oh, I'm going to go win this one for everybody. Here I go. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. Luckily, we have Leclerc and uh, Max fighting for it in the back, but 
Oh my God! I mean, and it, you know, I hate to say this, but this is going to continue for some time. Well, it's going to definitely continue、uh, this season and also next season. You know, I think Lewis should just ask for more money. Well, fifty million dollars not enough. Well, you know, you might as well get more from Liberty because it's really Formula L. I th- I, th- I think、uh, Liberty Media is doing a pretty decent job. You know, given the politics of Formula One, the you know Eddie Jordan once made a comment that egos in Formula One are so big that you can float Titanic on it, and he's pretty much right. So for what they have done, open up the. Sport as they have done, I think it's a lot more fa- fan friendly than it used to be, and you can feel it when you go to a, a tr- track now, the Netflix series and all that st- stuff that's going on. So they've done a good job. I agree, but they have one thing in common <laughs> with Rich Energy: they have a lawsuit going on on their logo too. By the way, both sides have been asked by the I think European Legal Commission for a cool off period to sort this out. So let let's see what happens. But their logo is very, very close to. I think it, the product from 3M is called Futuro, and、uh, so we'll we'll see how it works out. Yep, everything works out in the end, Nas. But at least they are not saying that we have 21 Grand Prix and we have 500 seats, but we haven't filled all of them. Very true. And they are still pushing for.、Uh, it's this is kind of impressive. They still want to have another race in、uh, on the streets of London Town, and which will which Lewis will win. Oh, shocker! That is a shocker. So shocking, yet so true. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, and you have fun, and we shall meet in two weeks. Thank you, Nasser. Keep up the good work. Thanks for listening. Good night. Bye bye.